a hand clap of praise like we know how to do it. Come on, let's make a joyful sound unto the King. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, King David is so well known for instructing us on how to worship the Lord. If you don't know what Bible-based worship is, read the book of Psalms. You will find every ounce of emotion and every ounce of expression in what David relates. And what David relates mostly is not this. David said, make a loud noise unto the Lord. He said, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise and worship was never meant to be a solemn affair. It was meant to come from the depths of our being and to exalt him with all that is in us. If you want a good example of that, let the Redskins win one game. You'll see it. You'll see all of that emotion come out. And for what? Right? We are worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God that created all things from whom our very breath comes from. You better believe I'm going to get emotional about praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's glorify him together. Let's lift our hands all across the building. And let's do what the last part of that song said. Let's adore him together right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We're nothing without you, God. You are the vine and we are the branches. Thank you for grafting us in. Thank you for making us a part of you. Thank you for adopting us, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for adopting us into the household of faith. Thank you for being our good, good Father. You are everything to us, Lord. And we bless you today.
everything because you're my everything Jesus oh you're my everything God my life exists because of you it's because of you that I live and I have my being it's because of you that I breathe that I walk that I live that I work that I have strength that I have victory and I need your anointing every morning every day anointing Hallelujah. Is that your prayer today? Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The love of God's here today. Our Heavenly Father is God with us here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's our sustainer. He's our everything. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels, the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. Plus, we know by experience, He's God with us. And... uh, David said it like this, him being our sustainer. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Hallelujah. He's our sustainer. Hallelujah. No matter what we're going through, he wants us to cast our burden. Whatever our struggle is, cast it toward him. And don't take it back. Just leave it in his hands because that's our Father knows best, number one. And he shall never cause us to be moved. In other words, when we're in the Lord's camp, when we're part of the Lord's body, nothing can move us from that. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen? We're going to go to him in prayer right now. But we have several victory reports. Josiah Spaulding, you may be seated. Joe. Josiah Spaulding, my friend from school, got hit by a car and had internal uh, lung bleeding. He was supposed to have surgery the next day, but was healed and is almost better now. Amen. Prayer works, saints. Prayer works, church. Amen. And God is good. Uh, We also, Sanjeev, we prayed for my uncle who had fluid in his lungs. 
and he was hospitalized, but is now out, is getting ready to go back to work. Amen. God is a miracle worker, isn't he? Quina Cooper, prayer for my brother, uh, mentor, Cooper, for healing in his body. And there's, this is a victory report. She's saying God has healed her brother. Amen. Amen. And we want to thank God for Don McCann being here today. She, amen. Only what she went through, only 20% of the people make it. And there she is right back there, shining, happy as can be, and looking really good. And we thank God for that. We've been praying for Sister Dawn, and uh, God is so awesome. Amen. Now for our prayer request. Also, thank you for praying for me last week. I was getting ready to go to church, and I had this nosebleed that would not stop. And... Uh, and they took me to the nurse's office. I got ice packs put on my neck. You know, we got a great church. I mean, we really do. They really took good care of me. Church, you guys prayed for me. And I've not had a nosebleed since last Sunday morning. Thank you. I wanted to thank you for that. All right, now for our prayer request. Bill Thompson um, has some health issues, and we want to pray God's healing um, upon him. He's been off work since Tuesday. Sister Dawn has swelling in her left leg, and uh, after putting, um, they put a tube in her kidney, so we want to uh, pray for Dawn. Uh, pain in body for Miss Dorsey, we want God's healing. Chanel Wood and um, Sherry Wood uh, need a healing, um, and Sh uh, Chanel is having surgery tomorrow. We want God uh, to touch her and heal her. And uh, Benjamin, for Brother jo Jonathan, has a special need. We want to lift up Jonathan. And um, Arcellus uh, Spalding for Carmen and Anthony have special needs. We'll lift them up. Arcellus Spalding for Elizabeth. Uh, she wants, she's prayer, wants prayer for Elizabeth to receive the Holy Ghost and, and baptize in the name of Jesus. That sounds like a pretty good request. Amen. And as... Tuana, uh, forgive me for not getting this name right, but the Sant, Santua Quisi uh, is traveling and is asking God's favor and protection. And also we want to lift up the uh, Brown family, Joe and Nora. Their daughter was murdered Thursday morning, and we want God's peace and comfort to be upon them. Amen. All right. So if I called your name out, you put a prayer request in, please stand. We're going to lift these needs up to our sustainer. Amen? We want God to touch miraculously these needs. And if you put a, didn't put a prayer request in, this is a time to stand. Any kind of prayer you might need, we're going to lift them up together to the Lord. One of these precious saints are going to come alongside and pray with you. So we ask you all to stand right now if you have, need prayer in any way. Amen. Praise God. All right, saints, let's go to these you see that are standing, and let's lift them up in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's our sustainer. He's our way maker. He's our healer. He's our everything, our priority, our treasure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody find a prayer partner, and we're going to lift these needs up right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your love, your peace, your joy that's in this place. Thank you for being our everything, our sustainer, our way maker, our healer, our comforter. Hallelujah. We lift up all these needs to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up our all of our prayer requests to you right now and those that have a need here today. Touch the Brown family, God, this tragic loss of their daughter, God. We thank you for coming alongside them, healing them, touching them, comforting them. Surround them with your presence, your peace, your strength. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We lift up, Quisi. Uh, let your traveling mercies go with her. In 
Jesus' name. We lift up Elizabeth to you. Thank you for salvation. We lift up Carmen and Anthony, the special need, God. Touch that need. Touch their needs, God. Supply their needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you for touching Jonathan, God, and helping him with his special need. Touch the Wood family, God. Chanel and Sherry Wood, God. Thank you for healing them. Thank you for being with Chanel as she goes through this surgery tomorrow. In Jesus' name. We thank you for healing the pain of Miss Dorsey, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for healing Don, the swelling in his leg, God. In Jesus' name. We lift up Bill Thompson to you, God. He's got some health issues, God, that are unresolved yet. God, heal him that he can go back to work, God. Heal him, God. Make him whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up each and every need that's in this place here today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for being Father that knows best. Let your perfect will be done. Let healing go forth, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our sustainer, our way maker, our everything. Hallelujah. You are our priority, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you for the answers, God. We praise you for coming alongside each and every need here, God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's, let's clap our hands unto him. Let's thank him. Let's honor him today. Let's believe. Hallelujah. Is there any believers in our house? Let's clap our hands here today. If you're a believer, give him high praise right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. High praise. Come on. We can do better than that. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is in this place today. Let's, let's give him high praise. He deserves it. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Somebody say amen. You may be seated. And the Lord is certainly good, isn't he? Somebody say he's good. And what a, what a great opportunity that I have to be in the same room with you. It's a blessing. Man, when I woke up this morning, it was raining. But I thought, I'm going to be with all my friends today. That made me happy. Hallelujah. And I get to worship God. And I get to worship God with my friends. Hallelujah. Turn and somebody near to you and say, you're my friend and I'm glad I'm here today. Amen. Today's a wonderful day. We, as I said earlier in the service, we had a great last couple days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, ladies conference, just a tremendous opportunity for our ladies to be present, amen, and enjoy the house of the Lord, amen. We want to go to the Lord this morning with our giving and allow him to be a part of our life in this form of worship, amen. We have enjoyed some worship with song, we're going to continue to do that. We've enjoyed worship by our commitment, commitment of being here today. We are enjoying worship with our decision to live for him. And a part of that worship is also in our finances and giving. The Bible says that, that he returns the blessings to those that give. Of course, we don't give to receive blessing. That's not why we give at all. We give because it's a part of our obedience to the Lord and the structure of mission in his kingdom here on earth. But there is a principle that we can't get away from. That when we give, that he turns around and blesses us. Amen. Sometimes we know the blessing, and sometimes we're just blessed, and we don't know that we're being blessed. Right. I didn't have a flat tire on the way to church today. Amen. My mom had a flat tire yesterday. 
Mom, are you giving? Hallelujah. I give of my talent, and when I give of my finances, I'm in obedience unto the Lord. How many can wave a hand and say, I've been blessed because I've been obedient to him? Amen. Amen regardless. As you're preparing yourself, our ushers do have envelopes for designation purposes if you need that. Do a couple of announcements just to make you aware of. This Saturday, everybody say this Saturday. This Saturday is our ladies' prayer walk, and it is going to be at 8.30 to 9.30 and meeting again at the Urbana, and I just lost what, where we are meeting. And we, we are not meeting. I'm not a lady. Uh, I think it's at the Urbana Library. It is at the high school. Urbana High School. Thank you. And uh, the Fingerboard Road entrance. Yes, thank you very much. And we are praying around Urbana High School. And uh, really creating an atmosphere where the Lord can move. Wednesday night, young people, you're going to hear a little bit more about this. But this Saturday is a Sky Zone trip on the 11th. You're going to be uh, hearing more about that on Wednesday night. And then Thanksgiving week. Everybody say Thanksgiving week. We're going to shift our midweek service to Tuesday night. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. And a lot of preparation uh, that people uh, and travel on Wednesday. We're going to switch our midweek service from Wednesday to Tuesday. And we're going to have a Thanksgiving service that night. Come prepared to be thankful and to hear about the goodness of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and, uh, and next month we got a lot going on, but we will be telling you more about that. Certainly glad that all of our guests and our visitors are here. Amen. If this is your first, second, third, or fourth time, we welcome you to Christian Life Center, and we are privileged and honored that you've joined us in worshiping our Lord and Savior. I do want you to know that immediately after the service, out our doors here to the right is a very, very casual come-and-go guest reception area. And it's there that there's some light refreshments, a lot of good information regarding our church and how we can partner with you in your journey in relationship with Jesus Christ. We'd love to meet you. No commitment. It's just a casual atmosphere where uh, you can find some more information about our youth department, our children's ministry, all the different ministries that might benefit you in your walk with God. Amen? Amen. Why don't we stand? We're going to give to the Lord and bring our gifts as the Bible tells us. In front of each section is an offering basket. Our ushers will dismiss you row by row. And then you'll just circle back around through your row. We're asking that everybody participates at least in the walk. Amen. If, if there's anything good uh, about this part of the service, it's we get the circulation going. Hallelujah. And so uh, just, it just makes it a lot more uh, convenient for everybody if everybody takes the journey. So if you're able to stand, amen, and able to walk, why don't you participate at least in the function of this part of the service, amen, and we'll all enjoy it. Afterwards, we'll pray over our giving, releasing the blessings of the Lord and promises in our life. As musicians play, ushers guide us, and then we'll pray over our giving in Jesus' name.
Amen. Hallelujah. Stretch forth your hands and let's lift our giving to the Lord and ask him to bless it. Father, thank you for your love that's in this place today, for your presence, your anointing, your blessing, God. We lift up this giving to you. We worship you in this giving. We thank you for your favor in our lives. We thank you for keeping your hand upon our families, our singles, God, everybody that's a part of this body, all our guests, our visitors. We just thank you for your blessings in our lives. We ask you to bless this giving in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. is somebody's birthday this week, so we are going to honor. Stand here by me in case I pass out. poems and a lot of writings to express our appreciation for Sister Monique, but I went straight back to Proverbs 31 because I think that is an awesome passage that, and she embodies the Proverbs 31 woman. So in the Amplified Version, it calls her a worthy woman. In the Message Version, it calls her a good woman. And in the first verse, it says an excellent woman. One who is spiritual, spiritual, see, I'm nervous, sorry, spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous. Who is he who can find her? And I think that we can all agree, Pastor Sean found her, but we have claimed her. And <laughs> she is standing right here. In the, the passage goes on to talk about everything that this woman, all the characteristics that she will embody to take care of her family. But as a church family, I know that we have all been benefited from the same type of characteristics from one way or another, if you've been here for any amount of time. At the very end of the message version, it says, I lost my place. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who f lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. We cannot afford to give you everything that you deserve. However, here is a very small token from your CLC family. to be like you when I grow up. The Message Bible also says many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. Amen. Kelly said I got to go before I pass out. I think she could preach. I don't know. That was good. Thank you so very much. There's an awesome feeling in this place, and I think it's not my birthday. I think it's like the afterglow from Ladies Conference, right? It was really awesome. I was walking around with balloons that someone had given me yesterday, and they said, oh, Sister Monique, is it your birthday? And I said, no, but I'm bringing these balloons around. I went and got them because I want everybody to know it's coming up. So if I carry my own balloons, they'll all ask, and then everybody will know I have a birthday coming. I didn't really do it. That was a gift for me, but I thought it's a great idea. For those of you that like everybody to know it's your birthday, it's a little subtle, and it looks like you were given a gift. You don't have to tell people you bought them yourself, okay? So thank you. I love my church very much, very much. 
I was speaking to some people today, and I said, I believe this week I've shed a few tears of gratitude for you awesome people. And this week, or this weekend, and leading up to this week, you have made me look so good. I carry a little position in our district, but I don't really do the job. All of you do. And Sister Beth and Sister Kelly, um, I know I can't do it without you. And this conference that we had, those of you that came to it, you blessed me because you were here, and I thank you for that. And those of you that put your hands to work, which were also those of you that came to Ladies Conference, I thank you. I want to thank Sister Kitty, who is with uh, heading up our, I'm pretty sure, Sister Kitty, if I get this correct, our parking ministry and, yeah, the greeters, the ushers, Sister Randolph, who got the team together for our security and set up and tear down, Brother Lakins, who made sure that everything was right on point with sound media and light, Sister Morado and her team with the cafe, Sister Peterson, Sister Tina McGrath, Christy Truck, Kelly Griffin, Brother Truck, Michael Griffin, and Brother Peterson, those men, these beautiful things that we have here, and the butterflies in the foyer, those ladies that cut out, but they cut those out one by one with scissors and like colored paper. It's beautiful. And we left it up so y'all could take some pretty pictures today too. But their husbands and this group of women put it together. I thank you so much for your gifts and talents. And Sister Beth for being the secretary of the Maryland DC Ladies District for real. <laughs> uh, I'm in disguise. You're the real gal. Thank you so much. I love my church. I love you all so much. You men that came out and supported it. Those of you that snuck in the services because so you want so you could hear Sister Coltharp speak. We liked having you here. Thank you all so very much. Amen. And uh, this week we had a little fun. Uh, Pastor Smith who is uh, Sister Beth's husband, obviously. Uh, we were affectionately referred to as Brother Beth and Brother Monique. And uh, so we, we certainly recognize that their hands were very busy at the plow, as were many, many other hands this weekend, and we appreciate everybody's help. And what a privilege that we've had to have... Uh, a personal friend of my wife and I, to speak at that ladies' conference, Sister Rachel Coltharp, who's here today on the front row. And she did a, an outstanding job for our ladies. Now, it was a ladies' conference. And I say that Seriously, it was a ladies' conference. In order to register, you had to be a lady. And in order to hear some of the things that were spoken, you needed to be a lady. I was here and, and left several times. Because it was appropriate. But, but we are certainly glad that in our service tonight, Sister Coltharp will be speaking to us, or our congregation. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> Amen. And it will be a message that is uh, for mixed audience. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to have a good time. Brother and Sister Coltharp, pastor in Aurora, Illinois. And he, her husband, is the district superintendent of Illinois. And uh, they, well, actually, he... She and your brother and I went to school together, uh, college, I think it was a couple decades ago, and uh, we've enjoyed a friendship for many, many years, and we're excited about tonight. Amen? Amen. So be back tonight, 6 o'clock. We're going to have a great service tonight. It's going to be fun. Choir's getting ready to sing, but I do want you to know that, as I mentioned earlier with our guest reception, it's there that you can find really two very important continuing education opportunities in the Word of God. One of them is our Grace to Glory Bible study. It's a five-lesson Bible study done at a convenient time and location. It's an individual study, and it really is an overview of the Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. 
And that sort of is a uh, prelude to a deeper study of the Word of the Lord that's done here, two opportunities on Wednesday evenings or Sunday mornings before church, which is our journey class. It's our journey class that really goes into depth about subjects like Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies, which I'm about to destroy several of his, his people. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. You don't learn about Beelzebub. Uh, but uh, it's on my mind right now. But it is definitely uh, a study that takes you in deeper understanding about subjects such as prayer, subjects such as how to live my life pleasing unto the Lord, subjects such as who Jesus is, how I can strengthen my relationship with him through my lifestyle decisions. And uh, it's that process that is the process, not only for biblical knowledge, but also for the process of becoming a member here at Christian Life Center and getting involved in the different ministries. And uh, we are so privileged and honored to be able to present full membership certificates today to two wonderful people. These are some of the most fabulous people that I have enjoyed getting to know in a very personal way. And I would like to invite, after having completed our classes and having met with me personally and have signed their covenant member certificate, I would like to invite Brother Andre and Sister Carlene Clark to receive their membership. These are some very, very fine people. Very fine people. Now, Brother Andre, he really wanted to take the microphone and talk today. But I told him we didn't have a lot of time. And uh, you're, you're okay with that. Okay, all right. This is a quiet giant right here. And a wonderful person. Sister Carlene has such a beautiful spirit. Amen. And God has done such a tremendous thing in their lives. And we are excited and privileged to bring them into full fellowship here at Christian Life Center. God bless you. Why don't we give them a hand of appreciation. God bless you. Amen. Why don't we worship the Lord this morning as the choir sings, and then we'll go into the word of the Lord today. I don't want to forget to thank our band that also played for Ladies Conference. <clears throat> we had some ladies, new musicians that joined them, but Brother Peterson, Brother Titus, Brother Lakens, Brother Sheldon, and Brother Jason Letman all arranged their schedules, and had to, some of them had to get off work early to make it happen, and Thank you. That's our lady conference band for how many years? Thank you, guys. How many is ready to worship the Lord this morning? Oh, come on. I think we can do a little bit better than that. I think God deserves some praise this morning. I think God deserves a little bit of praise this morning. Can I get a little praise over here? Come on now. Worship with us. Hey, yeah. Serve my praise, Jesus. Say amen. Amen, 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 amen. It is so. It is so. It is so. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. It is so. It is so. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. It is so. It is so. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hey. It is so. It is so. Amen. 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 Amen.
learned the way For sure there's nothing done in my life this morning I don't know about you, but God deserves some praise this morning Lift them up this morning world 
a bright and morning star Your name will shine for all to see You are the one, you are my glory Sing it glory morning let's stand to our feet and let's lift our hands and let's thank that glorious God we love you Jesus we thank you Lord you're so good to us your mercy is everlasting your kindness Lord God is everywhere around us your peace Lord Jesus surpasses our understanding your victories, Lord God, they're new every morning in our life, and we thank you for it. Glory. Somebody say glory. Glory to the highest. Why don't we give him a hand praise right now? Thank you, Jesus.
He deserves, the Bible says, all glory, honor, and power. He deserves it. Turn to your neighbor and say, he deserves it. He deserves it. And we're thankful to be able to give him what he deserves this morning. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Mark. It's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord today, to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Thank you for honoring my wife. Amen. This is the short time, two weeks, two weeks that one of us is older than the other by two years. Amen. And so tomorrow, Sister Kelly said, I went out and found her. Is that how you said it? I went and found her. I sought her. And I've already preached about that, strangely enough. Tomorrow we will celebrate our 24th wedding anniversary. Amen. Amen. And what a great 24 years that has been. Amen. Can you believe that? No. 24 years ago. Yep. 24 years ago. Mm. My mom and dad haven't gotten any older at all, they said. Amen. I am getting older. Feeling older. It's a bad thing. I helped my mom change the tire the other day. And, uh, oh, that's. She said it was going to cost her $85. And so I just reduced it down to 70. And uh, <laughs> thought that was a fair deal for both of us. Amen. I mean, she is my mother. I didn't want to take advantage of her completely. I had to rest halfway through the process. I told, I told her I was just looking for something that was embarrassing. Amen. The book of Mark, chapter 10. So glad that each and every one of you are here today. We are going to have a great time tonight. You do not want to miss tonight. I can promise you, you don't want to miss tonight. If you are a Sunday morning only Christian, it is confusing, but I, there's, there's a, I understand there's a process in your life, but I want to tell you that tonight you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss Sister Coltharp tonight. She's going to present the word of the Lord in a way that is going to be a blessing to you. You don't want to miss that. So I'm encouraging everyone to be back tonight at 6 o'clock. Amen. And then we can celebrate my anniversary tomorrow. Amen. That would be a blessing. I'm just kidding. You don't have to celebrate it. I'm going to. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 17, the word of the Lord says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Jesus continues in verse number 19 and says, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. The young man answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, Thou, one thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me hmm. he asked the question what do I have to do to inherit 
eternal life. Jesus just said, well, you know all the things that you've learned from your youth, the commandments, and the man quickly said, I have done all of these since I have been of age to understand. And then Jesus looked at him. He kind of went past the facade and the veneer and he went a little deeper into his soul. And he said, well, there's one thing that thou lack. He didn't really tell him what the one thing was. He just said, if you want to get it, in other words, you got to go do this. You got to sell everything, give it to the poor. And if you do that, then you'll have treasure in heaven. He never really told him exactly what this one thing was that he lacked. He just said, go do this and you'll probably get it. And in verse number 22, the young man was sad at that saying. And he went away grieved. Why did he go away sad and grieved? Because he had great possessions he had great possessions Jesus never told him what the problem was he just told him in order to get to the solution you're going to have to give up some things and the man went away very sad and very grieved because Jesus said that there's one thing that you lack. There's one thing that you lack. I don't want that the reason I don't make it to heaven is because there's only one thing that separates me from eternity. I don't want to be in the position that Jesus would say to me, you've done everything but one. You've done everything but one. And with the help of the Lord, for a few minutes, we're going to find out a little bit more about this man and Jesus' conversation. Why don't we bow our heads and us ask God to help us. If you'll join me in prayer, we love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for your spirit that is here today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are permeating this place. That you have been made manifest. That, Lord God, that you are real and that we feel your presence it's thick and heavy in here today. I pray right now, Lord, for every single person in this room that, God, you would touch them in the only way that you can. It goes beyond the ability of my speaking. It goes beyond the ability of our singing. It goes beyond the ability of this building. It really, we're dependent, Lord Jesus, upon your touch in our life. And, Lord, I don't know about anyone else, but I pray Oh, like my prayer this morning, that you would touch me, God, in the way that you can touch me. That when I leave here today, God, I have felt you in a real way. I already do, I already do. But God, I want you just to bring it, every bit of it, every bit of that touch into my life, Lord Jesus. I want to make sure that I spend eternity with you forever and ever. And if there's anything that I lack, Lord, point it out to me. Let me see it. Reveal it to me, Lord God. Unearth it out of my life, Lord Jesus, so I can address it and I can do something about it. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen. 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 Put your Bibles down and let's give the Lord one more hand of praise. Amen. The Lord's good, isn't he? How many feel better now than you did when you woke up today? Wave your hand at me and say, man, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. It feels good in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord's good. You may be seated. If we were to kind of back up in this chapter a little bit <coughs> in the book of Mark, the writer is explaining a lot of things that Jesus is doing and Jesus, previous to this, is in a discourse to the Pharisees about divorce. 
and marriage. And this young man is in the crowd listening to Jesus teach and talk about the important things of living correctly before their God. He's hearing a voice speak as we see him in the crowd, but I really don't think he is hearing what the voice is saying. There's a lot of people that hear with their ears, but they aren't hearing with their heart. There's a lot of people that gather around, and, and even today we have sang and we have worshipped, and God's presence has been real, and God's presence has been thick, and there's a lot of people that will say that they have heard or felt, I'm using those synonymously for this example, that I've heard God today, I, or I've felt God today, but only partially. Because I can promise you that when God is moving and God is speaking, that not only is there words, but there's direction tied to the words. And so this young man is, in the story that we're reading, he's listening to Jesus talk and his mind is preoccupied with, with his own kind of walk. And he's not really paying attention probably to whether or not a man can divorce his wife and whether or not it's legal and, and Jesus talking about Moses and talking about uh, the present day. And then suddenly the atmosphere changes in that moment and uh, mothers and fathers start to bring their children uh, to see this, this man named Jesus, this miracle man, this, uh, this master. And, and we, if we were to back up, we would see that the disciples are disturbed by this and they begin to try to uh, manage the crowd and as disciples do what they can do to sort of take the little children from disturbing the master in the middle of such a great impartation of wisdom on such a weighty matter such as divorce, and then surprisingly to the man in the crowd and surprisingly to the disciples, Jesus rebukes them. How many are with me in the, in the, in the Bible here? He rebukes those men who, in their minds, are trying to protect him and save him the trouble of being disturbed by children. And he says, he says, looks at his disciples and says, suffer, suffer the little children to come unto me. He says, forbid them not. And he says this, for such is the kingdom of heaven. He says words that we can hear with our ears, but he gives direction at the exact same moment. We hear him say, it's okay that the kids come. It's okay. Don't let them, don't let them bother you. It's okay. But then partially he slips in direction. It's important to not just hear with our ears, it's important to hear with our heart. Jesus says, it's okay, let the children come. And then he says, because it's these kind of attitudes and positions that these little children have that are going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus, as the story goes on, raises a little child in the air and declares... Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Now, quite possibly the parents would have said, how cute, oh my goodness, Jesus picked up my kid, oh man, that's so awesome, having missed what he just said. Now, the young man that we have started reading about is there kind of watching all of this. He's in the audience and he's preoccupied with his own thoughts of personal salvation that he missed everything that Jesus had just said. It's obvious because immediately after Jesus had left the crowd... This young man came running and kneeled to him and he asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? 
He had just witnessed some of the most incredible nuggets of message gold that came out of Jesus' mouth. He is standing there listening to Jesus in a very simplistic way tell him exactly the answer to his question. If you're like little children, if you'll come unto me like them, if you'll have faith like them, if you'll have and observe me like they observe me, if you have no premonitions and you have no fears and you have no worries and you have ultimate trust towards me, it's that kind that's going to enter into the kingdom. But this young man is so eager in his quest for the one thing that makes life worthwhile to him. He's seeking the master and he is desiring the fullness of life and completeness of expression the way he is framing it. Now, he's missed it and now he wants Jesus to affirm him. You know, that's a pretty standard thing. <laughs> Affirm me, Lord. Let me know that I'm doing the right thing. I'm not saying that that's totally bad. I mean, I think it's, we all like affirmation. We all like someone to say you're doing a good job. I like it. This fly is not doing a good job. <laughs> and this fly is about to meet its maker. But really, we can't help but be impressed with this young man. To a certain degree, he has really good character. Um, he's a wealthy young man. His conduct is really above board. His moral life is good. He's, he's got high standards in his life. And, you know, uh, Jesus tells him what he what he needs to do is just kind of, Jesus is sort, sort of kind of like, well, I mean, you know, if you do all these things that you've heard all your, from your youth and, you know, I mean, you're, you're a young man and you've been around the church and, and you understand what I'm saying, and you've, you've been around us. And, and the young man quickly, he says, all these things have I observed from my youth. These things, these Ten Commandments, he says, man, if that's the, that's the answer, I've done it. <laughs> I, have, I have accomplished. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for letting me know what it is that I need to do. I mean, this young man, as we read the scripture, just in this short little passage, I mean, he's led a decent moral life. He has obeyed all of the Ten Commandments. I mean, it's true. If you obey the Ten Commandments, you're, you're gonna, it's going to result in a good, clean life. There's no doubt. I mean, he's kept them. But Jesus doesn't end with just the Ten Commandments. I mean, you know, I talked, I talked uh, a couple weeks ago about my mom adding to the list. Do you remember that? Adding to the, Here, Jesus, this is, the, this is where she gets it from. Jesus is like, he says the Ten Commandments, there's no more, there's not an 11th commandment, but he, he makes another one. He says, oh, you've done all the Ten Commandments, yeah, well, yeah, and there's one thing you lack. I didn't know about it. Right, you remember, remember the list? I get up in the morning and, uh, you know, it wasn't really this way in my house growing up, but it is this way in my house now. If there's gospel music playing at 7.30 in the morning, on a Saturday morning, it's clean day. Right, everybody, anybody got that? The music is playing real loud in the kitchen or in the living room, it's clean day. Oh, no. Oh. You do everything you're supposed to do, and then I say, Mom, I'm done what I'm doing, and she adds to the list. This is what Jesus is doing. It's important to know that there is such a thing as godless goodness. Right. 
One may have a good life without being a Christian, without even believing in God. And this is the danger of trying to put a box around what living for God is all about. Putting parameters and boundaries and placing items inside that box and saying, I have accomplished and completed the list, Lord, that you have asked me to complete. Now I can inherit eternal life. I mean, understand, and this is true for humanity, people want rules. They do. They want standards. They, they, they want them because it gives them definition. It gives them understanding. I mean, this is what driving is all about. We all appreciate the rules. We don't follow them all the time, but we do appreciate them. We appreciate the double yellow lines. We appreciate the white lines on the edge of the roads. We appreciate the dotted lines. We appreciate all of the rules that are accompanying the driving experience. It gives us a feeling of comfort to know that there is a standard and that everybody is going to at least observe it to a certain degree. Right? But it is very dangerous to put relationship living in a box and create walls that clearly define the rules of what a relationship is. How many is married in the building? There's not a lot of hands. What's, how many wishes they weren't married in the building? How many want to be married in the building? Oh, come on, I saw those hands. My, my, my. Hurry, line up, we'll do it real quick. Hurry up, line up. <laughs> How many remember your wedding day? The day. How many remember the rules that you set forth on that wedding day? Yeah. How many were there? Five, something, six. I, we did the craziest thing at our wedding. M Monique is saying no, don't talk about it. <laughs> Let me just tell you this real quick since, since we're already over time. We did the craziest thing at our wedding. Her dad pastored church in uh, Louisiana. Of course, my dad pastored the church here. And we thought it'd be a great idea to have both our fathers uh, assist in the wedding. And we were trying to figure out how to do this in a unique way because uh, everything about our wedding was unique. Monique called me up and said, okay, um, I've got 12 bridesmaids. You need to find 12 men to come and... Uh, she said, just get 12 of your friends. I'm like. <laughs> so I was like, I don't have 12 friends. <laughs> so we got a couple of employees from here and made them go down. And and then I uh, lured them down, other people from my school, because it was going to be in, uh, held in New Orleans. And I was like, man, I mean, well, who, hey, come on, man. When are you going to be able to go there? What was your name again? Come on. Just, uh, just I need you to get a tux and just be there. So we had just in our, you know, 24 people, just in... And then my dad and her dad, and I had two best men, and you know, it was 16 chariots, and uh, we had a, we didn't have any of that, I'm just kidding. But, so we're like, how do we uniquely incorporate my, our dads? This has nothing to do with the message, but I'll be married tomorrow for 24 years, it's kind of fun to talk about it.
So, so how do we uniquely include our dads who are our pastors and we really want that part to be, you know, in our, in our wedding ceremony. So we had this idea together. I think it was together. Was it together? Did we have the idea together or was it your idea? It's probably mine. Oh, since it, since it didn't go well, it's probably my idea. <laughs> That's the truth. That's how you get to 24 at least. So we thought, you know, you know the, 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 the vows, right? I, Sean Libby, take you, Monique Martin, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for sickness and in health, whatever, you know the thing. Am I doing it right so far? Sickness and health. Richer or for poorer, keeping myself only to you as long as we both shall live, something like that. Um, um, Boy Scouts honor. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so we, we thought we'd do this, right? So I'm standing here, and Monique is standing there. Y'all got time for this? I'm sorry. And my dad is standing here, and her dad is standing there. So we thought, let's do this. And you know, you, you do it all for the groom, and then you do it all for the bride, right? Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to do it at the same time, right? So here's how it went. I, Sean Libby, take you, Monique Martin. I, Sean Libby, take you, Monique Martin. I, Monique Martin, take you, Sean Libby. I, Monique Martin, take you, Sean Libby. This is where it gets fun. To have and to hold, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, to have and to hold. <laughs> in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health. <laughs> At that point, <laughs> to love and to cherish, to love and to, and Monique goes, <laughs> Love and to cherish, love and to cherish, love and to cherish, love and to cherish. At that point, she, we both realized, this is insane. <laughs> and so, <laughs> somehow we changed it and we got through it, but it was absolutely hilarious. We, no, I think our dads didn't know what we were laughing at, we were dying laughing up there that we had to say everything was being said four times in a row. I said all that to say there's not very many rules to the, to the marriage that are spoken. Nobody in this room has probably ever referred back to the rules that were spoken. Mm-hmm. You're not having and holding. I'm mad at you because, because you're not doing the in sickness and in health part. Anybody? But has anybody ever heard rules that were never spoken at the marriage ceremony? Oh, oh, you're like, no, 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 I never heard none of them. All of them was up front from the very beginning. I remember every one of them. Right? Have you ever placed rules in your relationship that were never spoken in the ceremony? I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying... When it comes to a relationship, it's all in. And there's no boundaries and fences. You didn't call me. You didn't call me. You were late. Where were you? There ain't no rule about me calling you. <laughs> Who said anything about me calling you? 
Oh yeah, there's a rule about that. There ain't no rule about that. People want rules and they want standards. But they also want to know what the minimum requirements are. And that is detrimental, not only to relationships, but it is detrimental to our salvation. To ask, what is the minimum requirements? What do I have to do to stay married to you? Just give it to me. What do I have to do? You can't come up with them. It's like our lifestyle expression. Somebody asked me the other day, well, do you have a list of things? I want to, I want to be a part of it. Uh, a list? Yeah, do you have a list of rules? What's your church rules? Uh, be on time? <laughs> I said, I don't, we don't have enough paper in the building to list out everything that I can think of. Because it's not about rules. It's not about boundaries. It's not about fences. It's, it's, it's about all in. It's about all in. I can tell you that one of the reasons, one of the reasons, of, very, of many reasons, but fundamentally one of the reasons that a married couple will divorce is because they start trying to figure out what the minimum requirements are. What are the rules in this relationship? Do I have to do this? Do I have to tell them this? Do I have to be part of this? Do I have to say this? And this is where we find this young man. You could be, you could be exemplary in your conduct, but still not be saved. I need to tell somebody, if you're looking for the rule book, you're not going to get good enough to get God in your life. The Bible teaches us that we get God in our life so we can get good. Come on, somebody. Can somebody say amen to that? I can assure you I am a way better husband now than I was before I got married. I couldn't become a great husband and then get married. I had to get married to become a great husband. And boy, I am a great 100A top of the notch husband. Aren't I, baby? Rule number 72. And so he asks the question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And this proves, this little example, that he even wanted to know what the minimum requirement was. And it becomes a mind matter rather than a heart matter. And what he was saying in a lot of times in our day, what he was saying is what we say, give me something that I can analyze. Give me something I can scrutinize. Give me something that I can put together and calculate out. And then I'll assess if it's worth the cost in my life. Yeah, that's what premarital counseling is all about. <laughs> kind of, right? Come on, let's take some assessment here, all right? Come on, seriously. Can you handle this? This is an all-in thing. The Bible tells us to count the cost, doesn't he? But not to the point where we are looking for the minimum requirements. Because serving God is a heart matter, not a head matter. Certainly, as we read this story, we have to hand it to this young man. He was spiritually discerning enough to connect 
life with goodness, right? He understood that he had to have some of these things. He was rig religious enough to understand that there was truth. And after Jesus' treatment of the children, I'm sure somehow the young man may have connected this goodness with God, right? The young man recognized who Jesus was, but he failed to see what Jesus was all about. And it's a dangerous thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a dangerous thing to recognize the who of Jesus and overlook the what and the why of Jesus. We all love to come and get a good blessing. We all love the who of Jesus, going to give me a miracle, going to give me healing, going to go, oh, going to give me a blessing. But there's, there's a relationship attached to that. There's an all-in attached to that. There's a lifestyle of pleasing the Lord that's attached to that. Because all those blessings, they're short-lived without the relationship in place. They become momentary. Hopping from blessing to blessing, that's not a relationship. It really is a really, crudely speaking, it's really a lust of the flesh is what it becomes where we only want God for what he can give us but we're not willing to give God any part of us. The young man recognized something began to happen. The whole meeting with the master was really about him trying to figure out, is he going to be able to make it the way he was? This man wasn't a derelict. In this lawless and disturbed world that we live in today, we even would salute this young man. He was the kind of young man that most parents would want their daughters to meet and possibly marry. I mean, this was an upstanding guy. Ten commandments, everything, morality. Huh. Anyone will find them anymore. There's no such thing as, and it never has been, but in the words of our hum, human vernacular, there's, there's, there's no such thing as a clean sinner. <laughs> And it's refreshing when we read about this young man, right? He's clean, he's moral, he's upright, he's well thought of in the community. But just being good won't save a sinner. This man was courageous. The Bible says he ran to Jesus. This young man was daring in the way that he came to Jesus in this manner. Boy, it was, it's awesome to see when people come running to the Lord. It's an incredible experience when people recognize who he is and then they desire to be with him and they come running to the Lord. Oh, that we would have a generation in my day that would run to Jesus, that would run to him. I want to be that kind of person that would run to Jesus. Is there anybody, anybody in the building that would want to have that kind of characteristic that when you see him, you want to be near him and you'll do whatever you got to do to get to him. This young man, not only was courageous, he was, he was honest and he was sincere. I mean, he said, what do I lack? I, I've done all this, you know? What is it that's missing from me? I mean, that's courageous for somebody to come to the Lord and say, is there anything missing in my life? That's a pretty scary question, isn't it? It's scary because somebody might answer. And people aren't so ready to ask that kind of question in the day we live. But this young man like we should, we should be ready to ask that kind of question. Lord, is there anything that I lack in my life? I mean, I'm doing everything that I know to do, but is there anything that I'm not doing 
that I should be doing? That's even a hard question to ask to your spouse, isn't it? Because you know why? They might answer. And then the list never ends. Right? I think it's important every now and then in our relationships to say, is there anything in our relationship that I'm not doing that I should do? I think it's important. Do you know what kind of depth would be brought as a result of that kind of question to your spouse? And to have, have the character to receive the answer and to give it. You know, could we handle those kind of answers? To be able to say, well, I kind of just wasn't ever thinking I'd ever have an opportunity to say this, but it sounds so trite. <laughs> but when you do X, Y, and Z, it doesn't help me. It hurts me. What kind of value would that bring to the depth of relationship if you had the courage to ask, is there anything that lacks is there anything that I'm not doing? Is there anything that I could do? And then even more, because our relationships that are horizontal, although God-driven, God-ordained, and needed, don't compare to our vertical relationship with our Heavenly Father. How much more? Would it benefit him and us if we had the relational character to ask, like this young man did, what is it that I'm not doing that would please you and strengthen this relationship more than it is? It seemed like he had done everything that needed to be done, but when you're asking the question deep down, deep down when you ask the question, deep down you kind of already know the answer. You know, if you've been in my office and have sat down and talked to me, I'm honored and I appreciate it. But one of the things that you'll find out about me is that one of my jobs, my main job, is to really help you say what you already know. Not really get it from me. And one of the, one of the things that, that we do in the office is, I say, look, the only reason you're here is because you already know the answer. You either want me to affirm it, you want me to say it's wrong, or you want me to give you a new angle on it? So why don't you tell me what it is so I can help you? The courage to ask the question most of the time reveals that you may already know the answer. And the reason why we don't like to ask the question is because when we ask it, we know we got to answer it. So he asked the question. He wasn't shirking. There was no hypocrisy. There was no type of shrinking away. Yet when confronted by Jesus with the, the cost of his total commitment, which is exactly what the young man knew, he could not handle the answer he already knew was coming. He was looking for Jesus to say, everything that's written, you've done. And just continue doing it. Instead, Jesus, I think, answered 
the question with the answer the young man already knew that there was some some things in his life that he was unwilling to let go of. And even though he had tried his best to do all the things that the scriptures had said, he knew that there was still love for other things. I think the Lord shows how awesome he is when Jesus loved him. And Jesus saw that there was a young man that had an opportunity and that was at the crossroads of life. He loved him for his characteristics. He loved him for his life. He loved him for his sincerity. He loved him for his motives. He loved him. He loved him. He loved him. Just as Jesus loves each and every one of us. And every one of us has got to come to that juncture in our life. And every one of us must face the same demands that this young man had to face. And we could shake our fist at Jesus and we could say, I can't believe it. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. And yet you're still demanding more. I've done everything. I mean, I went through the Christian development class. I heard about all that stuff and read in the Bible. And then not only do you have Bible rules, then you got church rules, and then you got platform rules. And I've done them all. And yet you're still asking me for more. Jesus just simply tells the guy, he says, look, if you, if you want to go to heaven, he says, you got to go. You got to sell. You got to give. You got to come. You got to take. And you got to follow. The young man quickly calculated in his mind, he goes, those aren't, those aren't part of the Ten Commandments. That's not part of the covenant. That's not part of the rules that I heard about. That's not part of the things that, that I've heard about to be a part of the choir. That's not, that's, not the, that's not the things that I've heard. I've done everything that you've asked me to do and now you're telling me. And these demands surprise the young man. They disturb the young man. He wanted eternal life and Jesus told him the terms and the conditions. And what he was saying is, not only do you have to do these things, but you have to do more. Isn't that what a true relationship is all about? Isn't that what a solid relationship is about? To do all these things and more? Isn't that... Doesn't that make the relationship so much sweeter and better and more solid? Not because I'm doing it because it's a rule. I'm doing it because I'm all in. And if there is any piece of me, Monique, if there's any piece of me that's not all in, then I have to revert back to the rules. And there's not enough rules to make our relationship solid. It's either all in or miserableness. So let me just give you a little marriage counseling. If you're miserable in your marriage, it's because you're not all in. And you're trying to just live by the rules. And there's not enough rules that will make that marriage full of love and joy and peace. There's not enough rules. It's an all-in thing. And when you're all-in, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. This young man found that ultimately his possessions possessed him. 
and he was not really free at all. He thought he was home free and he was not free at all. Instead of keeping the Ten Commandments, he was unmasked as breaking their spirit and violating the First Commandment. He thought he was keeping it, but he was actually breaking it when the First Commandment was to love God supremely and wholly. That is the foundation of the moralness of the laws. And he had failed to do it because he had kept a piece of himself for himself. Now I understand what it means and I understand the concept and I'm not saying that in our, in our earthly relationships that these aren't necessary and good things in the, given the right context. But there is no such thing as me time. I just need me some me time. Now, please understand, we don't have time to go through 12 lessons on what that means. But if I'm out with my friends, all 12 of them now that I have, <laughs> if I'm out with my friends or I'm doing a, 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 an away trip or I'm hanging out, it's not, it's not, I'm not doing it because I need me time. There is no such thing as me time. The only thing, the only kind of time we have is we time. We just may not be together at that time, but it is we time. And in the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as me time. It's we time. If I'm hanging out with, with a friend of mine, I've got, I've got my wife right there with me the whole time. She may not physically be there. And so this young man had failed on the very moral part of the law of having God supremely and holy as the foundation of his life. And it ended up being revealed that he loved self more than he loved God. The climax of this story, if the musicians come, the climax of this story is very tragic. The Bible says that he went away sorrowful. Why did he go away sorrowful? The scripture says because he had possessions, great possessions. What he thought he had actually had him. And Jesus said, there's just one thing that you lacked. He had the letter of the law, but he missed the spirit of the law. And he lacked the one thing that had given meaning, purpose, direction, and salvation to his life. He wanted Jesus, but he wanted Jesus on his own terms. And Jesus and relationships don't work that way. They don't work. Prenuptial agreements are not relational. There is no me and me. It's only a we. And that ain't a game you play. He could have gone away rejoicing. Instead, he went away sorrowful. The question is not really, in essence, there's, there's parts of it, but the question is not really how will we approach God. The question really is how will we leave God? Leave God. We've approached him today. We've come into his presence today. We've recognized his goodness and his mercy today. We've recognized his faithfulness today. 
We've been touched by the manifestation of him today in our life. Approaching him is the easy part. Approaching him is, is easy. We've done it together. But the real question is, is how will we leave him? This young man was determined to leave Jesus the way that he approached him with a smile on his face, with gladness in his heart, and a relationship solid. But when he was challenged by the one thing, he had to leave in a way that he didn't approach. I don't want to leave sorrowful because Jesus points out just that one thing. It's just the one thing. It's not a list of things. It's just one thing that you're not doing for me. God, in his love and in his mercy, wants nothing more than a satisfying fulfilling relationship between you and him and it should be our desire like it is his desire that if there be anything that would take away from that kind of relationship fulfilling and satisfying then we should be willing to get it out of the way and allow that highway of peace and joy, satisfaction and fulfillment between us and him to be unobstructed 100%. If you feel that way, why don't you stand to your feet? How will you leave here this morning, ladies and gentlemen? Will you leave here with great joy? Or will it be with sadness in your heart? Because the price is too high to pay. Will you leave here today saying, thank you, Jesus? <laughs> I kind of knew there was something that wasn't allowing it to be just mm, between us. I, I kind of had that feeling. Some of us may say, yeah, I know exactly what it is, God. Some of us may say, wow, I, I didn't realize that that was so important. You know, there's sometimes that my wife and I have had discussions and one of us have said, I didn't realize that was so important to you. I didn't realize that was so important and I want to I wanna adjust, I want to change. I, both of us have said that. And man, that desire to make that relationship stronger, that little thing, that wasn't, that wasn't anything. It wasn't nothing. We got rid of it, changed it. So there's sometimes that we weren't aware, we didn't realize that that one thing was in the way. Then there's other times that maybe we've approached each other and said, look, this is kind of hard to bring up, but you know, ah, it's X, Y, and Z. It's kind of messing up how I feel. And then one of us might say, yeah, I, I kind of knew that. And I'm, I, I knew it. Let's talk about it. And the only reason that we're still together after 24 years tomorrow, because it's only 23 right now, honey. The only reason that we're going to be able to be together for 24 years tomorrow and the only reason that when the trumpet sounds that we'll be called away is because the times that Jesus and us have this kind of conversation that we make the decision to say I didn't realize that Lord but I don't want that to be in the way I'll change that I didn't realize that, God, I, I, wow, it makes sense. I mean, now that you've explained it, I see it. And I, and I, and I want to be different. I want to change. 
That's the only reason that we're married for 23 years and tomorrow 24. And that's the only reason that when the trumpet sounds that we'll be called away. The other reason is when Jesus confronts us with something that we already know. And we say, I already knew. Thank you for bringing it to my attention and us discussing it. Our relationship means more to me than that one thing. Being with you, honey, means more to me than that one thing. And being with you, Lord, means more to me than that one thing. I wonder if we could lift our hands to heaven for a moment in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I wonder if you could just tell the Lord, I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I want our relationship to be solid, firm. Lord Jesus, I want eternity to be spent with you, Lord God. I want eternity to be spent with you. With our hands still lifted, we've, we've run out of time, and, but, but time doesn't matter when we are really firming up a relationship. Time doesn't matter. I'll take all the time in the world, honey, to make sure that our relationship is where it needs to be. And God, I'll take whatever time is needed to make sure that our relationship is where it needs to be. With our hands still lifted in surrender, surrender to Him. God has talked to us. He's spoken to us. He said, He's pulled us aside during this message and He said, yeah, there was something kind of like bothering me, but you know, it's, you know, I, I thought maybe we could talk about it. And God's already done that to us. And some of us are being forced right now to say, oh, wow, I had no idea. Okay, I could do, I could, yeah, that, that's nothing. I can take care of that. No, no problem, God. Some of us, God is confronted with something we already know. And we have a decision like this young man. We have a decision. Do we say, Lord, I am willing to sell everything that I have. I am willing, in essence, to give up what has a hold of me. I'm willing, God. It's not about the possessions. Don't focus on the money right this second. Don't focus on the possessions because that's not really what it's about. It's about ownership. It's about who owns who. Who owns who. When I got married to my wife, I no longer owned myself. I gave ownership over to her. When she married me, she no longer owned herself. She gave ownership over to me. When I gave my life to the Lord and I submitted myself and surrendered the kingship of my life to Him, I no longer owned myself. This is not about possessions. This is about what possesses us. So God is saying to us as He did that young man, there's some things that possess you. There's some things that have control in your life. And what that doesn't allow, it doesn't allow for a full, satisfying, fulfilling relationship between us. There's only one thing you lack. What's our response today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our willingness, our willingness to submit to that relationship is the answer. We're either going to walk away with a smile or we're going to walk away sorrowful. Grab the hand of the person that's next to you and pray for that person right now in Jesus' name. Say, Lord God, give us the kind of heart that would be willing to make changes that's necessary in our life. Lord Jesus, if there's anything that we lack in our life, I ask you, Lord God, help me, help me right now, God, help me. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. There's things that are possessing me that are keeping me from having a solid relationship in you. Help me. Help me. It's a decision. It's a decision. And right now, why don't you take that person by the hand 
And why don't we make our way to an altar and why don't we say, Lord Jesus, I'm making a decision right now. I'm making a decision. My relationship with you is more important than the things in my life. I'm all in. I want you to come and pray that prayer. Say, I'm all in, God. I'm all in. I'm all in. There's things that possess me. There's things that possess me. But no longer, no longer will they hinder my relationship with you. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Let's come down with our hands lifted in Jesus' name. Come on in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, God, in your name. Fill in close. Come in close. Come in close. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, God, in your name, in your name, in your name, in your name, in your name. Oh, yes, God. That's right. That's right. My heart, I worship you. All that I have within me. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I love you, Lord. What is it that I lack, God? What is it that I lack, God? What's keeping me? What's keeping me, Lord Jesus? Oh, yes, God, yes, God. Is in you. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to give you everything, God. Everything, God. Everything, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everything, Lord Jesus. Everything, God. Everything, God. over to somebody and pray for him right here in the altar. Just pray for him. Somebody near to you. And say, Lord Jesus, let not the possessions possess us. Let not our position position us incorrectly, Lord God. Let our, not our desires, God, take us away from your purpose in our life, Jesus. But help us, Lord Jesus, to be all in for you. 100% God that our life would be pleasing unto you beyond the rules beyond the commandments God but in the relationship with you Lord Jesus what is it that I lack God what is it that I lack what is not surrendered in my life what is not surrendered in my life Lord God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus what is not surrendered in my life, God? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I give you my all. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I give you my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I give you, Lord. Bless my brothers and my sisters, God. Saturate us, God, with your love. Saturate us, Lord Jesus. Let us feel it, Lord God. Let us feel it, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. If you need to be dismissed, please, you can take your fellowship to the foyer. Those that are continuing to pray, please feel free to continue to pray. It's outside the rules, but be back tonight at 6 o'clock for a great service. It's outside the rules, but you'll benefit from it. It'll be a great time. We love each and every one of you. To our guests and visitors, we thank you for being here. I hope you can pass through the guest reception. We love you. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock for service. I give you, I give you.